Awesome. So uh, for people that are just starting out who are in college and who want to get started with machine learning, what would be your advice to them? How can they get started? And, uh, you know, just uh, give us a little bit of a roadmap into machine learning. That's a, uh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, what, I would, uh, what I would advise uh, those of us who are uh, getting into this field is one, uh, we need to understand that uh, uh, artificial intelligence machine learning is basically a tool like any other tool that we have in the market out there. And uh, what really matters is uh, how do you use this tool? It's like when you have a knife and you have a djembe or any other tool. The key question is how do you leverage and utilize this tool effectively so that it becomes of positive impact to either your business, to help your business, or to help your community. Uh, and uh, once you start having your conversation and uh, having that perspective, it helps you now to ask yourself, yes, uh, we're now in a data-driven economy. Uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence has come up to help us build data-driven solutions. So where exactly do I want to apply this kind of knowledge? What do I want to do? By that, I mean, that helps you to start at an early age to start getting to know uh, which fields do you want to specialize in? Which field do you want to apply the knowledge in? Let's say maybe like uh, for my case, I was uh, heavily an IT-based student. Uh, and, um, 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 or, or, and at that point, um, I was not so sure like where exactly I wanted to specialize in. But having that uh, experience with the banking and finance industry really helped me that by the time I was taking up now serious machine learning, um, after I was done with uh, my internship, uh, because that's the time period I could really say that I did much of now uh, serious machine learning. What really helped me one was that at least I had a clear roadmap. This is the domain field that I wanted to specialize in. And uh, what I now needed to is to now gain uh, the domain knowledge that is in my field of choice, let's say maybe you want to focus in marketing, uh, uh, pick up uh, marketing as a domain, the field, or maybe let's say you want to work with communities. Uh, and then uh, from there, now start asking yourself, what kind of impact do you want to be able to provide? And uh, uh, once you're able to start answering these questions, they helps you to be able to um, um, make your roadmap clear because why we saying so is because uh, when you talk of machine learning technologies, um, these are frameworks that keeps on changing, keeps on uh, getting updated uh, yeah. as time moves by uh, and uh, mm -hmm. with all the computation power that we have. But what makes someone to be able to make that meaningful contribution is one, um, uh, when you have at least a field that uh, you're specializing in, and uh, this helps you to uh, even be able now to gain deeper knowledge because you know it, it, it's really hard to use a tool to build a solution for a specific domain if you don't really understand that domain. Because mm -hmm. anyone can learn machine learning, but not anyone can build innovative solutions. So by that I mean anyone can get to learn the technology, which is now as a tool, but not everyone can be able to use that tool effectively to be able to use it to its meaningful purpose. So uh, by that mm -hmm. I mean um, um, pick up a domain or get to pick up an area that you feel you're quite excited or that will help your community. Uh, and then from there, uh, start, once you have your questions uh, clear a bit, this is the kind of impact I would wish to do. That will even make it clear for you to get to uh, uh, be able to now start bringing together uh, uh, like-minded people and even mentors, people who you share similar ideologies, who are already experts or who are experienced in the field, who will be willing to support you. Because I would really say that uh, mentorship and support uh, from well-experienced data scientists, maybe in your area that you want to focus on, will really help you, one, to refine your roadmap. Because one thing that we realize that is uh, you can set up a roadmap that you want to learn data science this year. But come, uh, come at a time, let's say like next year, there will be changes in terms of technologies, in terms of uh, the methodologies and the tools that are being used. So the best thing is once you have a good roadmap, uh, you'll always need to iterate. You'll always need to keep up with the trends in, the, in your field of choice. So uh, I would say uh, having mentors is quite a great resource. Uh, and uh, when it comes now to uh, the, different, uh, uh, the different resources that you can use, uh, I could really say that uh, deep learning the AI uh, has amazing set of courses that would mm -hmm. uh, help each and every one of us to step up into yeah. deep learning to also get to understand uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, the latest up to uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 framework of choice uh, that I love using that is uh, TensorFlow and all the way now to the latest uh, NLP specialization. So when it comes to uh, uh, the roadmap, first focus on what would you wish to 
uh, see uh, at least being uh, 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 what would you wish to do with uh, the data or to at least uh, work with the uh, machine learning tool in your field of choice uh, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, be someone who is willing to learn because uh, as I did mention that uh, um, to me this has been quite an interesting journey it's been a journey that uh, one we all need to embrace uh, a lifelong learning um, attitude you have to realize that uh, you will not just become a data scientist in a day it has taken me almost two years to now this year that's when now uh, I started operating fully as a full-time data scientist but uh, that didn't uh, still, um, uh, I still had my goal and that's why uh, uh, besides that I told myself, you know what, I still need to work towards getting my master's because I have a target that I would wish to uh, at least uh, click to a certain level and be able to, uh, uh, be able to now uh, uh, push uh, and transform uh, or be able to shape up my field. So I would say when it comes to uh, 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 designing and coming up with your own road, uh, data science and machine learning roadmaps, get to consult, get to uh, at least start bringing together uh, uh, experienced data scientists and the people whom you share similar uh, uh, values. Let's say you want to focus on uh, uh, banking, finance, and insurance domain, start bringing together, start getting mentors from that field uh, because they'll really help you. Because one thing, these people already have that experience. They already are well uh, versed to the field. They already know what could help you to scale up, what could help you to maybe uh, uh, at least be somewhere in a span of six months, in a span of 10 months. And what I'm saying so is because uh, uh, much of the information online is quite highly quality. The roadmaps and uh, the information that's out there is quite good. But uh, many other times that what we have out there uh, is full of noise in that you, uh, you cannot be able to curate well and tell what exactly would uh, would really work best for you. But if you have mm -hmm. someone who knows, who understands your strengths, who understands yeah. your purpose and who understands where you want to be at, they'll help you refine your learning curve. It will become smooth. And I believe the challenge is they'll always be there to be able to provide support and to even introduce you to opportunities that will help you grow and uh, get to at least the level that you would wish for. So I would say that uh, get to start knowing the kind of field that you want to focus on. Uh, which technologies do you want to focus on? Like, let's say, like for my case, uh, natural language processing, and uh, what you want to do in the span of, let's say, five years, and start working towards that. Um, slowly, uh, slowly, uh, and um, um, uh, at the end of it, you will get there. I know it's quite a tough journey with mm -hmm. almost everyone, um, uh, the students who are who are in school and uh, the career people. Uh, all of them now trying to transition to the data field. So it's quite competitive. And uh, you have to ask ourselves, how do you get to stand out in this sea pool of crowd? So uh, you can only be able to stand out and be able to uh, at least make that positive impact in your field from a young, that, uh, that junior level, if you're mm -hmm. able to define your path, if you're able to start working towards your goal. So that is what I would say when it comes to uh, defining a machine learning roadmap. Uh, and uh, let us all uh, have that and uh, get to understand that this is just a tool and uh, what really matters is where and how are we going to utilize the it. application is more important yes, yes. Mm -hmm. right uh, i wanted to ask you uh, would you advise someone to start learning statistics first of all and then move to learning about python numpy pandas and then go to uh, something like tensorflow or should they directly go to uh, you know, learning the framework PyTorch or TensorFlow and then afterwards just do it as they go. Because I think that once you just uh, look at the documentation on the TensorFlow page and once you start learning and implementing that, that you will be able to make models, right? But uh, when it comes to just making your own projects, then uh, you will really have to know the basics of statistics. Uh, that That's just something that I have uh, felt. Let me know what you think. Awesome. Uh, that's a good question. So uh, as you've mentioned, once you have now your purpose in the field that you would wish and kind of impact that uh, um, you'd want to achieve, the next thing is now uh, equipping yourself with the knowledge because this is the knowledge that will now help you to tackle those problems, to come up with those solutions and to be able at, uh, to innovate. So uh, I would really say what uh, has worked best for me and what I would advise is uh, uh, don't be in a hurry, don't be quick to rush to uh, taking up machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always good to have a strong foundation. It's always good to build 
uh, a strong baseline uh, when you're coming into a field that uh, is highly dynamic, like artificial intelligence, that's really changing. So what I would say is, uh, first of all, get to understand uh, um, mathematics. Uh, and uh, by mathematics for machine learning, I mean get to understand linear optimization. Uh, you don't have to go to advanced levels. You can go to just uh, intermediate or okay level. We also have calculus. We also have linear algebra. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, statistics. And uh, what I'm saying, so uh, as a beginner, don't stress yourself going to advanced level. Just get to at least to a fair uh, intermediate uh, level where you feel you're okay, you understand uh, basic concepts in mathematics for machine learning. And uh, why we're doing this is so that we build a strong baseline foundation. And once you have this really uh, good in place and you're comfortable with this, now this is at, uh, at this point now, uh, this is where you, uh, you can now proceed to understanding uh, what is machine learning, uh, what are the various uh, types of machine learning uh, uh, techniques that are there, what is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, enforcement learning. Um, get to understand now uh, the common algorithms that uh, we use and uh, why we're doing this again we now want to build a strong foundation uh, in what we call um, many people love calling it is uh, uh, the classical machine learning or the traditional machine learning because as much as yes currently because of huge computation we're talking of deep learning it's always it's always good to have that foundation because you're talking of Deep learning builds up on machine learning. Yeah. And machine learning leverages on statistical, uh, statistical concepts. And now that you already have a good foundation of uh, statistics and all the machine learning for uh, mathematics for machine learning, now we're moving to uh, at least having uh, that good understanding. Uh, you don't have to go to advanced levels like delving deep so much into the algorithms in machine learning. Have a good foundational understanding. That is if your goal is to learn deep learning. So uh, mm -hmm. once you understand uh, the various algorithms, and when it comes to algorithms, uh, what I would advise is that uh, don't just uh, import plug and play algorithms, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, the libraries and uh, all that. Strive to at least understand um, a bit of the uh, behind uh, screens implementation of the mathematics. And this is where you're able now to start improving on you already gained knowledge in mathematics. And why it's always good to uh, at least understand uh, the maths behind uh, the algorithms. You don't have to go that complex, but at least understand why, uh, maybe, uh, what happens when we fit, what happens when we predict, and why uh, it's quite significant to do this is because um, at times you will need to debug your solutions, at times you will need to accelerate your solutions and scale them, but if you don't really understand what happens uh, uh, the behind implementations, it becomes hard for you to debug them. So uh, it's quite good when you're starting off, just start uh, uh, slowly, fairly getting to at least understand uh, uh, how these algorithms work and more to that, where do you apply these algorithms best with what kind of data? Because you're talking of you have very many algorithms and uh, the, um, each algorithm, uh, they have the best set of data and the best side of question, um, a best set of uh, um, application areas. And more to that, um, focusing again on your field, get to know, let's say, the kind of problem you're working on. How do you, which is the best algorithm? Yes, I know it's good to like uh, plug and play 10 algorithms and then pick the top five, but uh, at least understand why are we, um, uh, why did we settle for random forest for this particular mm -hmm. problem? And yeah. uh, that helps you to continue firmly building your machine learning knowledge. Uh, and uh, now as, uh, when you get to a level that you feel uh, at least you're quite comfortable, uh, you can now take up deep learning. Uh, and then uh, you realize uh, when you talk of deep learning, there are various uh, application areas. Uh, you are, um, um, I would say uh, just have an understanding of what each field means, just a uh, surface level or uh, don't go deep, uh, and then pick up an area because uh, we're talking of, uh, we have computer vision, we have speech recognition, we have uh, autonomous driving, we have NLP, we have very many application areas. So again, as we did mention, pick up an area that you feel you're quite comfortable, that excites you, and then be an expert in it. Yes. Because uh, it's always good to be in one, a master of many. And when you're looking at you just a beginner, pick up one field, get to continue delving deep as you now master the others. And this will help you to become better, to understand that field better. And more so to that, it will firmly equip you to be able to build any kind of solutions for that specific field. So uh, that is the kind of, um, maybe what I would say when it comes to uh, drafting uh, and uh, 
uh, designing your learning curve when it comes to machine learning. Don't be quick to just uh, rush to deep learning and uh, start implementing and working with these techniques. Get to understand uh, a little bit of where we're coming from. And uh, this will help you strengthen your foundation and also to that, prepare you to even tackle uh, advanced concepts and advanced technologies that will be coming up in the near future. So you will have a strong foundation and you will have a, a, a strong weight, a strong trajectory as you move up. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, what do you think about conversational AI and do you think it, it is something that is possible for long form conversations? Um, I would really say that um, uh, at the point we are now um, where we're generating a lot of textual data, day in, day out, every second, every minute, um, we're getting to a point where we have to ask ourselves more into how can we leverage this uh, textual data, how can we be able now to build solutions that uh, 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 can be able to mimic human behavior in terms of interactions, in terms of conversations and automating these conversations. So I'd really say that uh, a quite interesting and exciting field that is so rich that uh, we, we, we should strive to uh, a layer focus in is uh, what we call conversational AI and uh, uh, natural language processing. And uh, when you look at maybe uh, the baseline companies and the baseline innovations that uh, you're, you're getting to see uh, um, in the industry, if I look at, if you take a good example of uh, uh, my field, that is banking and finance insurance. You're talking of automated banking, you're talking of uh, personal assistance, you're talking of uh, uh, a lot of uh, solutions that are really being built that are, uh, are focusing heavily on con uh, human uh, interactions and conversation. Uh, and uh, I'd really say that uh, this is a field that uh, has a quite rich future. Uh, and um, uh, we should start asking ourselves with all the data that we're generating in our specific fields, how can we automate tasks and how can we be able to see how we can build solutions that will help our businesses to make more profits and also to help our communities. But, um, and I, I would give a good example. I, I came across a friend of mine who is visual, who is visually impaired, but um, uh, he can be able to uh, speak and uh, uh, do all everything else. But um, uh, because he also has a friend who's been able to uh, take up machine learning, uh, through the interactions with his friend, he was inspired to come up with a solution that could help the blind people to leverage on their voices to be able to uh, uh, do tasks that they could not be able to do because they cannot be able to see. And uh, for his specific case, he was able to come up with a solution that uh, allows you to just uh, uh, make use of your voice and uh, you're able to automatically build your well-polished uh, resume. So uh, if you look at such kind of uh, uh, solutions, uh, aside from just from the business setup, uh, we could really say that uh, this is a field that uh, an area that uh, we, we, uh, we should uh, give it a more emphasis and uh, uh, see what more we can be able to build when it comes to uh, conversation AI and uh, natural language processing. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you must have heard of Neuralink, right? Neuralink is an organization started by Elon Musk and uh, it talks about brain machine interface, right? So do you think that is something that can be possible and that should be something that we as a society should accept? Because again, we have a lot of uh, concerns related to privacy, right? Uh, we already have things going on with Facebook. And so uh, what do you think about this whole brain machine interface using ML uh, models to predict what someone is thinking based upon their uh, electrical you know, impulses in the brain? Uh, great, uh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I'd say that uh, one, uh, uh, with the huge competition and also uh, with uh, much of the investment and funding being uh, channeled towards uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, the developments that uh, we're seeing, uh, uh, um, uh, that is one of uh, the, uh, what I would say, the results of um, this much focus in this area, much funding and all that. Uh, and uh, one uh, point uh, that I would say we are really uh, not uh, putting into much consideration, as you mentioned, is uh, the social implications of uh, this kind yeah. of robust solutions that we're building. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that you've mentioned uh, is uh, uh, data privacy. There are very other key things, such as uh, uh, how socially acceptable are the kind of solutions you're building? How ethical are they? Uh, will they be accepted by people? Uh, will they maybe... Uh, uh, in a way, um, 
be able to uh, discriminate marginalized communities or what are their repercussions yeah. towards the end users? And mm-hmm. we start asking ourselves those questions way beyond, way even before we start uh, building our solutions. Yes, we have good ideas. We want to uh, implement such kind of uh, solutions uh, like uh, uh, the ones that you've just mentioned. But uh, if at all we don't ask ourselves, what are the, uh, the implications? What are the social implications? What, are, what will be the impact of these kind of solutions uh, towards uh, the users, that is, or people? Uh, then I feel uh, that is where we will lose uh, the track. That is where, uh, as much as we're going to fund and be able to come up with these solutions, one, uh, we might see a case where these solutions um, will terribly fail because um, we are building these solutions for people. And if we don't yeah. really consider such key uh, implications such as uh, data privacy, uh, such as uh, ethics, and uh, how acceptable are our solutions to our people, uh, and involving them in such kind of uh, decision-making processes. Because, you know, for us, we have the expertise, we have the knowledge, we have the computation, but we're not building these solutions for our own. So when we start bringing together all the stakeholders and getting to hear from them, would really what is their perception? They feel that such kind of solutions would really be of positive impact to them. And how can we even help them? I, I believe that will be um, a, a good direction and a good way that will help us to uh, be able to even see a, uh, an increase increased uh, rate of success because you're talking of if you look at like right now uh, we have very many people in artificial intelligence field many of them calling them experts but if you look at the number of people that we have vis-a-vis the innovations that are already out there that are being uh, uh, utilized and used by people there's a huge difference there's a huge gap so you start asking yourself we have very many experts but why is it that uh, until now we have very many data-driven problems that have not been answered but when we start asking ourselves such kind of questions it becomes even easier to uh, also tackle all the other problems that uh, uh, come up when we're building and are trying to um, implement such kind of solutions. So I would say that uh, that are, that's a very uh, ambitious and a great project uh, that's moving towards the future. But we should also consider um, the people and the implications of such kind of solutions so that we don't uh, invest so much in building and coming up with such kind of solutions. But at the end of the day, they don't see the light. They just collapse or they fail or people don't even accept the solutions. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Kennedy, it was a great time talking to you. I hope the audience would be able to learn something from this and get started with machine learning. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best for your future. Thank you so much. I do greatly appreciate for this opportunity and uh, uh, keep up the good work that you're doing. And uh, thank you. So that was the episode. What do you think? How was it? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, And uh, yeah, thank you so much for the 3000 subscribers. That just means the world to me. Thank you so much for supporting me in my journey. Uh, You guys are amazing. And uh, let me know what sort of videos you you want me to do in the comment section as well. I have linked up some resources. You can also connect with Kennedy. I've linked uh, his LinkedIn profile in the description. So go check it out if you want to. But thank you so much. And I'm just so grateful that you guys are here supporting me. And I hope you're also learning something from these videos that I'm making. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.